So the Mandela effect is based on a rumor that that uh, Mandela uh, that he died in prison back in the eighties. That was a rumor. He never died in in the eighties. And then the internet came along, and the information was put out there that he was still alive. And then he died recently in 2000. So they're basing the Mandela effect on this rumor. And if that's the case, then everything else that's being built on this uh, idea of the Mandela effect is all false. Yeah, it makes you wonder uh, why people would want to believe in something like this. Now, as far as different information being put out there, like uh, videos, like uh, movies, like Star Wars, like just different phrases being changed, that's nothing more than remastering a movie. When they uploaded the videos to uh, the to the internet, they remastered those videos. Now, whether the elite or the Illuminati have anything to do with trying to change information on the Internet, that remains to be seen. But I think what is literally going to happen is that they are going to uh, try to manipulate the information on the Internet, and they're going to, in, in some sense, they're going to try to rewrite history. I think that this is why Google is trying to get all the books um, recorded on the internet. Maybe it's possible that they eventually will either take all the books in the world and put them in in a place where only certain ones are allowed to go to those books, um, and then uh, and then all the information on the in the world will only be accessed by the internet, and that way they can manipulate it. Um, I think that if they had their way and God would allow it, I think that's what their end game would be. I think they would want to control the world with the Internet because it's uh, without question if you can control the information and there's plenty of TV shows and movies out there with this concept is in the movie or the show where the whole civilization was wiped out then a whole new civilization or a whole new uh you know, civilization began, and yet the only ones that had access to the real history of the world were certain quote unquote elites. Only certain ones had access to that information. I don't think God's going to allow it to go that far, to be honest with you. But I think that's what's in the mind of these uh, very evil, wicked uh, control freaks that uh, are insane and have this God complex, I think that's what's in their mind, that they would like to take all the seeds in the world and have um, copyrights on the seeds and that they would uh, not be, uh, seeds would not be readily available or you could not get access to the seeds and that they would have to be controlled by them. Everything would have to go through them. You would be totally, completely manipulated and controlled. And I think that's their end game. I really do. Could you imagine if all, I mean, they're already rewriting history. I mean, I don't know how far back, even when I was in school, they never taught us what true history was. You didn't ever hear the real history. They just gave us what they wanted us to hear. They, they've been dumbing down the American people and people have been dumbed down for a long time now, people. Um, but uh, it's it's been a long time since the real true history has ever been in the public schools. They knew a long time ago if they could manipulate history, then the, the foundation, you know, the Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? Well, they've been trying to destroy the foundation for a long time now. I mean, if you look at Washington, D.C., it's built on a, on a pentagram. It's built on Satanism. It's built on the occult. It's built on, on esoteric uh, secrets and uh, cryptic, coptic secrets. Uh, this has been going on for some time now. And so we need to understand, people, that uh, there is certainly a conspiracy 
that is trying to manipulate the information, the history that's in this world. And if they're successful, then maybe you and I wouldn't be affected by it because we have knowledge of the history. But when you have little children that are now just coming up and babies just being born, this gener- next generation, they call them the millennium generation, uh, without question will be the ones that are going to be, um, you know, manipulated and controlled. Um, and they're going to basically have information uh, that is completely different than what you and I have had for information as far as history, as far as our origin, where we came from. And they would like to completely remove God, scrub God, and any history of God from uh, the Internet, scrub it completely off so there's no, there's no knowledge of God whatsoever. Satan would like to get rid of all the knowledge of God, completely get rid of all knowledge of God so that there's no knowledge of God whatsoever, no knowledge of a creator whatsoever. This is what they would like to do, people. This is exactly what they would like to do. They would like to get rid of all history that has anything to do with the creator anything to do with the Bible, they would like to scrub it completely. That's Satan's world. Satan doesn't want any light in his dark world. He's, he is about darkness, and he wants to keep the world in bondage, wants to keep them um, in darkness, and, and he wants to keep them suppressed and keep them uh, oppressed and even possessed. Um, so, you know, when you look at the scripture and the Bible talks about the dark ages, the Bible says there was no open vision. There was no given word from God during the dark ages. And that's what Satan wants. He wants to go back to the dark ages. Well, I'm here to tell you, folks, if God throws the switch, we're, this world's going back to the dark ages. I mean, we, we see in the Bible that in the Arm, Battle of Armageddon, they're fighting with... Uh, not with tanks, not with jets, not with nuclear weapons, but with swords and with uh, with horses. They're riding horses. Uh, so why so primitive? Uh, I think because before this is over, there's going to be an EMP that's uh, in some fashion of God's wrath being poured out, and all the whole world is going to go into a state of darkness And it's going to get very, very primitive and very uh, barbaric on the earth once again. All of that barbarism, all of that um, primitive, it's all going to return once again. But I think that uh, these uh, elite, uh, I I don't even like calling them elite, but Satan's elite, I guess you could call them that, uh, because God has his elite too. Uh, But Satan's uh, elite, those that have all the money in the world and control everything, call, control policy, you know, they consider themselves Luciferians or Illumin, Illumins, Illumin ones. But um, they, they literally would like to manipulate all the information on the earth. They would like to manipulate it. They don't want to just remove it. They want to manipulate it. They want it to say what they want it to say. Now, a lot of it they do want to remove. Um, do you know when uh, Hitler was finally uh, uh, killed and uh, when his whole, um, you know, his reign of terror, his reign came to an end, that they were going to destroy the Nazi books. They were going to get rid of all the Nazi propaganda, everything, and there was someone that said, no, don't, don't burn it, don't destroy it, we'll sell it. Guess where they sold it to? They sold it to the West. They said, we'll sell it to the West. Well, what do you think is uh, right now in, in the crypt at the Yale College? What do you think lines the walls of, the, of, of this fraternity uh, crypt where the, uh, these certain individuals that are tapped, that, uh, that are initiated into the bonesmen and the Masonic uh, uh, secret societies. What do you think that they're being uh, taught in these crypts, in these places? They're being taught Nazism, people. That's what George Bush Jr. was taught. That's what uh, Kerry was taught. 
John Kerry and George Bush Sr. and on and on. All of these Masons, all of these Illuminists, all these people, that's what they're learning. They're learning Nazism. They're, they're following Hitler's playbook, people. They're following and actually finishing what he started. Did you know that Hitler considered himself to be a Christian? Do you know that Hitler considered himself to be an overcomer? Do you know that Hitler considered himself to be a son of God? Do you know what Hitler said concerning um, killing the Jews? He said, I'm just finishing what Jesus started. He said Jesus was casting him out of the out of the uh, out of um, the, the 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 temple, saying, "You've turned my father's house into a den of thieves and robbers." It's supposed to be a house of prayer, and Hitler says, "I'm just finishing what what Jesus started." He said he drove he drove them out of the temple. He says, "I'm I'm doing I'm just finishing what Jesus started." So Hitler literally became 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 convinced that he was doing the service of God. He thought he literally became. You know, totally possessed with the idea that he was doing God's will, that he was doing God's service. People understand that when Catholics call themselves Christians, when the Pope calls himself a Christian, this is the epitome of the the Masons. This is the epitome of the Illuminati. But see, the Masons and the Illuminati are not just made up of the Catholics. It's made up of Muslims. It's made up of... Um, Mormons, it's made up of Scientologists, it's made up of all the different religions. Masons have infiltrated every single area. The Jesuits, it's all infiltrated by Masons. Okay, it's all infiltrated by the Masons. Do you know why they call themselves the Masons? They call themselves the Masons because the Masons were the ones that built Solomon's temple. They were ones that had the wisdom and the understanding how to build the temple. Did you know the Masons have a uh, desire and have a plan to rebuild the Solomon's temple? That's why they call themselves Masons, because they're rebuilding the temple, but not just a physical temple. They literally believe they're, they're designing and in, in, in following uh, the architect of the universe to b- rebuild the temple, not only physically, but spiritually. Are you listening? To birth this generation into the new eon or the, the, to the new age. That's what they really believe. That they're being, that the, the, they're going to bring them through the temple and they're going to be born again. So when you hear Hollywood stars or you hear the entertainment industry and they say they've been born again, they're not talking about the same born again that Jesus talked about. They're talking about being born into the, uh, the, satanic, um, you know, cryptic, coptic um, secret societies. They're talking about being born into the new world order, being born into the new age. And this is what they're doing. This is the whole plan. That's why they call themselves Masons. Because the Masons, again, were the ones that built the temple. Now you wonder, okay, think about this. Why is it so important for the Rockefellers to have all the gold? Why do they want the gold? You know, you got the Bushes and you got the Rockefellers, they want the oil. But why is it that uh, Rothschild wants the, the gold? Why does he have the most gold? And why is it that gold is going missing all over the world right now? Why? Do you have any idea, folks, how much gold it's going to take to restore Solomon's temple? Do you have any idea? See, this to them, this is all about rituals. All of this is about rituals. And the end game is to rebuild the, the Solomon's temple. And they believe, this is what they really believe, they believe Solomon is returning. They believe that. They believe this, and that's the Antichrist. They believe Solomon's going to return and reign in his temple. Well, we know it to be the Antichrist, the man of sin, that wicked. See, Solomon repented, and he came back saying, this is the sum of the whole matter, to fear God, to fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. But they don't go to that scripture. They are trying to follow Solomon in 
his esoteric, uh, dark, cryptic um, initiations, schools, if you will, where Solomon was schooled in the teachings of Babylon, Egypt, very dark and evil, vile things. And we see this in the scripture when, he, when Ezekiel, God took Ezekiel um, to, the, um, to the wall of, the, of, the, of Jerusalem, to the wall of the city where the temple was built on. And God spoke to Ezekiel and said, dig in the wall. And he dug in the wall. It was covered up with some stuff they had put in front of the cave hole because they had a cave in the wall. And he went inside there in the spirit. God sent him in there in the spirit, and he, and he saw what they were doing. And God said, Son of man, see what they're doing? Do you see what they're doing? Turn again, I'll show you greater abominations. He showed them all the things they were doing in there, in the dark. And these, was, these were the 70, uh, the 70, the, 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 the 70, um, what do you call them? The... Uh, the elders, the 70 uh, that were in the Old Testament scriptures that were to take care of the house of God, the temple, and take care of, they were under there in that cave using God's instruments, using the things from the temple to serve Satan with. They were worshiping Satan. They had their censers in their hands. And, and, and Ezekiel is watching this. And then the Lord says, I'll t he says, turn again and I'll show you even greater abomination. Then he sees them weeping for Tammuz. And he saw them uh, worshiping uh, the sun with their faces toward the sun, worshiping the, 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 the sun in their backs to the temple. Folks, this is going on today. Did you know when they started the first um, Masonic temple, or not temple, but um, what do you call it? A lodge, the first lodge that was started in uh, in Jerusalem. Do you know where they started that? In the same cave that Ezekiel went into and saw what they were doing, the abominations they were doing there in that cave on the wall of Jerusalem. Do you know that cave is still there? Did you know that? It's called the Cave of Zedekiah. And do you know that cave is still in Jerusalem today? And that they, every year, they shut that down and they don't let the public go in there because they're doing rituals in there. That's what they did. They started, uh, when they had the first uh, lodge, I forgot what it was called, the first lodge that they started in Jerusalem, they went into that cave and did a ritual. Now, this is, this is actual facts I've read on the Internet. Facts that used to be available uh, five, uh, six, seven years ago. It's all gone now. But it used to be available on their lodge websites. It's gone now. But um, I, I wish I would have gotten all that information. I never did. But you know what I found was interesting is right across, directly across from the opening from the cave of Zed Zedekiah, Right across the street, okay, there's a bus station built there. But guess what's behind the bus station? Golgotha, where Jesus was crucified. Do you see why they call themselves, and they talk about skull, skulls and bones? Because right directly across, right directly across, where Jesus was crucified is called the place of the skull. They still, they're trying to get back to the ancient, the ancient uh, esoteric, the ancient things that Solomon was doing and the priests were doing, the Sanhedrin was doing, the 70 were doing. When Ezekiel went in there, people, Listen to what I'm telling you. They're doing this in the chambers of their imagery. They're still doing it today. 
If you was to go down into the caverns, down into the tunnel system of Cave Zedekiah, you can go under there. They, they allow the public to go under there. But there's an area down there where you can't go. That's completely sealed. You can't. That's only for them to go. Once they go down there and they invoke spirits unto this world, they go back to the same place. And it, for all I know, for all we know, they may be still using the very things may still be down there from Solomon's temple. And they're involved in some very dark, evil things, people. Very dark. You could never even imagine how detestable, how evil and wicked. And this is in Jerusalem. No wonder Jesus called Jerusalem, spiritually called Jerusalem, Sodom and Egypt. And it even goes as far as it says in, in the book of Revelation, the place where our Lord was crucified, the place where Jesus was crucified. This is called Sodom in Egypt. Well, look right on top of the judicial building in Jerusalem, big, huge pyramid with one eye on it, just like your dollar bill, with Masonic signs and stuff at the begin entrance of the judicial building. They say it up in the top of the judicial building is a library, most beautiful library up there with books, all kinds of books. They would like to wipe out the it's an information war, people. They're manipulating the information so they can control the masses. You better hide the Word of God in your heart because pretty soon they're going to start taking Bibles away. <laughs>